Yes, Deb. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got another population of cells that's very intimately involved in signaling to the epithelium, especially where it relates to both inflammation and um, proliferation. And I'm wondering if you think that any of these effects that you're seeing could actually be indirect through signaling down to the myocardial right. and then getting something back to the epithelium. Right. That's a great question. Um, you know, some of, peop some of peop the people in Dan Podolsky's lab have actually looked at myofibroblasts from the gut and they feel they express TLRs and are TLR responsive. In addition to that, um, there's a very nice man called Tad Steppenbach who works at WashU who has looked at this and he feels that there, there is this, these cells, these mesenchymal cells that promote, that protect a stem cell niche. And it's those cells that in an MYD88 dependent way foster proliferation of that. Like I said, I think one approximation could be what I just suggested, which is we could cross them to TLR4, or, you know, we could try to get rid of the other, T, you know, that, that's problematic because I know that it could have other TLRs, but as, as a first approximation, because we did the schlockiest thing, which is we did these bone marrow chimeras. When we made the bone marrow chimeras, as you know, when you nuke them, uh, you, you're going to keep the epithelium and the, and the mesenchyme will still be the same genotype. So it's, it doesn't, it's not gratifying. It doesn't answer your question as it should be answered. Um, and so we'd have to, or maybe you can tell me later when I see you what other promoters or things we could do to, to specifically target those, you know, those uh, mesenchymal cells. We've done other kind of interesting things that we haven't, uh, you know, had time to pursue. We've crossed... Um, these mice to mice that can't, that um, express a chemokine inhibitor. So they can't really recruit cells very easily to the gut. And that does blunt their proliferation. So there is something that isn't just autonomous to the cell. I think there's something exogenous to the cell that is promoting their proliferation. Yes. The Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the issue is on, about localization. Um, for the villain, for the villain TLR4, we think based on immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence studies that it's all over. Um, I think that my bias is that TLR4 is expressed basolaterally um, in normally, and that it loses its polarization in cancer. But I, I but we really need to do you know, like electron microscopy to really figure that out because the TLR4 expression in normal cells is pretty low. Uh, in an, in a, for what it's worth, in vitro, I was saying this to someone, so I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. We've used T84 cells, which, you know, is a colon cancer line, but has a couple of cute features, including the fact that it becomes a polarized epithelial monolayer. And these cells express very little TLR4 and MD2. Uh, but you can transfect them with this, and then they're responsive to LPS. So what we did was we transfected them with TLR4 and MD2, and then allowed them to become a polarized monolayer. And when that occurred, only basolateral addition of LPS resulted in NF-kappa B activation. So at least functionally, the, the TLR4 was, re was recognizing LPS on the basolateral side. And I find that teleologically gratifying. But I, that's nice that I find that teleologically gratifying, but, I, but it's harder to prove that in human tissue, you know, human ex, you know, ex vivo tissue. We're trying just to get fresh tissue from colon resections um, and, uh, and try to do it in frozens and try to do it by EM. That's it? Yeah. Thank you, guys. I like you.